I'm going to read this to you because it's a little long and it's up here anyway if you want to read it. I, I like this this um, here by Teddy Roosevelt. He was one of the presidents of the United States. I know you all know him. And this is what he did in The Man in the Arena. And I, I like this because it's it, it kind of weeds into what I'm going to be talking about. And, stuff. and it's like this, okay. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man. Um, I'll just interject right now so I don't get in trouble. Or woman, or them, or they, I don't. So if I say man, that's what, because Roosevelt wrote that, he lived a long time ago. Who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error or shortcomings but who does not actually strive to do the deed? Who knows greater enthusiasm, the great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold, timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. But as you know, Teddy Roosevelt was bullet, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. riding on an elephant or something like that. <laughs> Everybody else has a horse. You know, he was kind of flamboyant in that nature. But that's a, for me, it resonates with goals. Goals are those things you wish to accomplish, that's that's all that goals really are. They're, they're personal, you know, they're, they're, they can be physical, they can be anything that you personally wish to accomplish and that can be a goal. You know, they're, they're, they're not things that are kinda, kinda set in somebody else's imagination. Those are, those are things personal to you. So when setting goals, the most important thing that you have to keep in mind is, who am I? You know, that's important. And, and, and we'll, we'll kind of weed that in a little bit more like that. And what are my values? That's really important when you're setting a goal, especially the values that you will not compromise on. You know, they, they, everybody has these other, oh, I'm, I value integrity and I value all this and then the, first time some kind of mishap happens, they kind of squeeze away from their, their selves and they say, well, I'm not really like that and stuff. But the values that you will not compromise on, you know, it's like, I'm not gonna compromise my values just to, just to save my life or something like that, you know, like that. And then your beliefs, those are another important part to factor into who you are, what you believe in. What is it that I love? That's another important thing. And then there's the other side of what it is. What is it that I hate? You know, those, those, all, those all come in. So when you look at yourself, you want to make sure you look at your whole self, not just that outward appearance, or you, you want to put out there or any of those things like that. So when setting your goal, remember to focus on what it is you want to achieve only personally you want to achieve that's that's the reality and then what is yeah this one and like in shakespeare y'all read that in school right? yeah. mm -hmm. hamlet this above all to thine own self be true again like i said that's that's the most important to thy own self be true. if you want to set a goal to be a millionaire or a billionaire and go to outer space and something like that, like some people did back 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> but they achieved it, right? Because they were to their own self, they were true. It's like, yeah, I run, I'm putting reusable rockets out there. It's going to take a minute. And they got people signing up to 
going out of space. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying another way. I, I got my grandson all fired up on astrophysics, so he can go there. <laughs> and I can get a free seat. <laughs> That'll work. Hope it'll work. Yeah. So all that really means is don't lie to yourself. You know? A lot of people love to lie to themselves. Then it's ingrained in them. It's like, oh, I can't hurt their feelings, so my hair's wet, so I can't come to the party. You're bald. You know? <laughs> Your hair's not wet. You know? <laughs> Just, you know, don't lie. Just be true to yourself. No, I really don't want to go out today. I don't want to go to the party. That's, that, that would be the best thing to do rather than trying to convince people that oh, I just washed my hair. I'm dating myself. <laughs> now, here's, here's five rules for setting goals. You know, when you're setting goals, first thing is they have to be something that's motivating, that motivates you. And then the second thing, they have to be SMART goals. We'll talk about SMART goals. That's the acronym for you know, specific, all those, we'll say that. And then the goals, this is important too, put it in writing, you know? Put your goal down in writing. And then make an action plan. And everybody uses the word make an action plan. The action plans, they can be really complicated you know, you can put in big fancy words and stuff like that. Oh, does my plan generate some kind of forward motion? And does my plan have interactions with the next step and all these steps and what's behind it? Doesn't have to be that complicated because it's your goal. <laughs> you know, your action plan could be as simple as, yep, I'm gonna get up every morning and my goal is to go outside and smile and somebody smiles back and I'm gonna register every time somebody smiles. And that, you don't need a real hard action plan, but the action plan's there. You get up, you practice in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, you, go, you get all that out there, you go do that. And then the, the, the hardest part about the action plan and everything is to stick with it. Because you can always con convince yourself that I can't do that, you know, it's not going to work. So now we're going to talk about motivate. I don't even know if there's a slide. Nope, we don't have one. So when you're setting goals, it's important that the goal motivates you in a positive manner, you know? Because other things can motivate. Money really doesn't motivate people in a positive manner, unless when they don't have it. And then they think, oh, that'll be great. But once they start to accumulate it, it's like they don't even think about it because it's not motivating. It's just, you know, oh, I got, you know, what am I going to do? It's more what they're thinking about. But they're not really, oh, I, I, I felt so motivated because I, I made $100,000, I made $200,000, and I, what I do? I bought the cat gourmet food. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. So, so you got to make, and so you, you want to make those goals compatible with your, like I said, your values and your beliefs and the who you are, the, your whole entire character and stuff. Okay? Now, nah. and this is good too. Make your goals high and important. You got to make your goals high and important. My, my goal when I started started uh, when I left all these other things that I used to do. And my little business, Archang I got a business called Archangel of Return to Chivalry. I didn't wear my shirt. And my goal was to return chivalry to the world. So I made that goal really high. Not just to Americans or people in this area, the whole world, that's my goal. Yeah? And I'm still working towards it. The goal, it was funny, it started in, I was in Amsterdam, and I went to the Rembrandt, the Rembrandt um, little art gallery and stuff, and I forget the name of the picture. Big, he painted big pictures in dark and everything, but it, the picture didn't, it didn't bother me, it just left this thing, what's up, what's, what's up with this picture? And then later on, that, that evening, I was still thinking about it, and, and the picture kind of had, good guys and bad guys and stuff like that. And I'm like, 
you can see, you can, you know, visualizing in my head, the good guys all, they didn't have big smiles, but they had positive looks on their face. The, the bad guys had negative looks on their face. So that's when I said, well, they're not very nice, you know, because the bad guys weren't making any room for the good guys. So that's when I got the, got the epiphany that I wanted to do, return chivalry to the world. But that's, that's what motivated me to do that. And I'm still working on it in that. It's been about eight or 10 years. I figure I'll get to it and, and finish it, you know, hopefully, at least before the end of time. But, so I got a long time to keep working on it. So I'm gonna keep working on that. And that's, that's how I started my company, Archangel. And it morphed over into leadership and executive coaching, which I do for fun. Now we're going to talk about SMART goals. See, here's your acronym. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's what that talks about. So your goal must be clear when you're making it. That's specific, right? It's got to be clear and well-defined, yeah? Just clear by itself isn't going to make it. Clear and well-defined is going to be able for you to understand what it is you want to go. So you make your goal easy to get to where you want to go. And that, like we will see with the Alice in Wonderland. You know Alice, right? See the little blonde-headed girl? <laughs> And that's the Cheshire Cat. This is what's her goal. It said, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? And the cat, he said, well, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. Yeah? The cat, he, he's smart. You know? But he does everything for fun. <laughs> what do you want? I don't care. You know? And she said, I don't much, it doesn't much care where, said Alice. Then the cat said, then it doesn't much matter which way you go. You know, it's just doing plain, simple logic. So long as I get somewhere, said Alice. Because she, but she, see, the only problem I ever had with this one here, the cat doesn't know she's frustrated. She's totally out of her environment. Nobody falls in a hole and then shrinks down to a little itty bitty cake, <laughs> you know. Alice added as an explanation. Oh, you sure to do that, said the cat, if you only walk long enough. And that's where a lot of people, uh, people fall in trouble with setting their goals, you know. They get trapped in a circle. They, they start, oh, my goal, like one of my other goals right now, I'm an Olympic weightlifter, yeah? So, and I have a contest coming up in Reno, Nevada in, in um, November. So that, that's when I do my next contest. And I could pass around my last one. <laughs> <laughs> this, see, that my little gold medal. <laughs> I pass it around. That was in Washington State, yeah? <laughs> so, yeah, but I could just easily just you that yeah I'm going to win to weightlifting and I want to go medal in Washington State and I, I get real tired continually going in that circle and get dizzy and fall down and nothing's accomplished because the next one's in in um, Reno Nevada I wouldn't have trained for it I wouldn't have done anything and I would have just kept going around in the circle thinking I'm something and in actuality, I'll, I'll be nothing. I get in there and probably hurt myself. You know, so that's why you, you, you know, you can't just make a goal and not not do the work. You know, and try to lay back on all the things. Yeah, I'm so perfect and everything. You have to have some direction. So you know, I got direction for for here, for for Reno, and it's cumulative too. It's not the same direction when I started out. Before I started out like everybody else, I'm just going to pick it up and throw it in the air and push it around, and, and then I'm going to look at the crowd and everybody claps. You know, <laughs> doesn't work like that. I got to pick it up and get out the way so I don't drop it on my head and you know, so I don't hurt my shoulder trying to throw these things around and stuff. That, 
that. You know, they, I got to train, got to stretch. And then I have to do a lot of apologizing to the wife. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she got to hear it. <laughs> I'm a big baby. <laughs> so now we go to measurable. And measurable we'll spend a little bit more time on. When you're making your goal measure, it should include every aspect it can. So you can measure, you know, your progress and stuff like that. And I go back to lifting the weights. Everybody thinks Olympic weight starts here, goes here, and then you pull it up here, and you throw it up. Or you pull it up here, and you push it up. That's, there's 19 moves that the judge is looking at when you're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows that. So there's 19 different measurable things, aspects to Olympic weightlifting that, that's not known unless you're in the sport itself. And that's how you should measure your goal, whatever it is. If, you, if your goal is to become the world's best fry cook, you know, you would say, oh, yeah. I ain't doing much with, with myself now. I'm kind of bored. I think I'm going to go down to the local diner, get a job as the short order cook, and I'm going to be the best short order cook there is. Now, how are you going to measure that? So you say, ah, let me see. Are people going to look at me, you know, because they're waiting for their food? So if I'm happy and smiling, and I got my song playing on the, on the radio and stuff, and I'm doing this, and then, I have to practice flipping that egg so I can under, underhand that egg and flip that basket over. Should I go this way and flip that basket over? But the, the measurable part of the thing, to see if you're successful in achieving your goal, one of the things that's the best, the best short order cook is the response from the people waiting for their food. Are they looking at me? Are they, they watch, wow, he, he really knows how to flip that egg. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know the difference between the eggs. I know scrambled eggs. Yeah. <laughs> you do that. Yeah, all the eggs. The rest, but one's a sunny side egg and the other one's a fried egg or some, some kind of nonsense like that. I, I don't know, a lot of it tastes good. But that's how, if you wanted, that was your goal to become that, you know, the people would leave out of there and then they're coming back just to watch you flip the egg, because, you know, you're reaching your goal. When you set the goal, that's the measure, but you want to put every aspect of that measure in. Some may have one, two, three aspects of it to, to measure it. Some, like the lifting has 19. You know, it depends upon what the goal is, but you want to incorporate all that. And to measure success, you want to know you know, am I doing it good? Can I use both hands to flip those eggs or am I still limited to, to one hand and stuff? Do I want to use both hands? Yeah. And, and that's how you measure it. And with the lifting, am I moving more weight or is the weight just crushing me? Yeah. So sometimes you get crushed, see? And uh, well, I get to breathe again. I'm good at that. So <laughs> not that good. I had to teach myself. Well, my wife taught me how to read. I really couldn't read. I was a product of, of the Boston public school system. I, I couldn't read. You know? First book I read was Winnie the Pooh. She made me read Winnie the Pooh. I could swear. <laughs> I, I was pretty good at that. But she doesn't let me do that. So in any direction about a proposed venture, a number of questions need to be asked in order to discern whether or not it will contribute to genuine integral development. Okay? I, I don't know. So what will be accomplished? You know, just like we're flipping the egg, being the best fight. What, what's it going to accomplish? People are going to come in there, get their belly full, they're going to leave out of there with a smile and stuff. That, you don't know, they, they might, you don't, because you don't know what their history is or what they're like. They might have went in there for their last meal, you know, with, with, their, with their wife and kids before the, before the husband get, and the wife get divorced. You don't know, you might have been, they might have looked at you, oh man, how can somebody who's 
flipping eggs, working as a short order cook, be that happy. Honey, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. You know, <laughs> you, that, that could happen, you don't know. But you do know that you could have filled their hearts with some kind of happiness and everything just by flipping the egg, crunching up a, 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 a home fry or something like that. So you wanna know that what it will accomplish and why it will accomplish it. Why, why, where, and when really they, they get in there, but they really don't get in there all that much. But why, why will it accomplish something? Because you, you had the, the charisma to um, just pass it on. People, people gravitate towards happiness. And then when they find it, they run away from it real quick because they don't want to duplicate it. And a lot of times they can't see themselves in the happy person. So it's like, oh man, I can't be happy like that. So yeah, what's wrong with them? You know? <laughs> so they, you know you're good when somebody asks you, what's wrong with you because you're happy? You know, so, oh yeah, I'm right on now. Look at me, yeah. And then there's the other things that come and go. So what's it gonna cost? Everybody wants to get into it. But that is only an excuse of what's it going to cost. Because the next thing is, who, might, who will pay for the cost and how? You know? If it's going to cost too much, you know, you know I got to go to the bank and get a loan. You know, I got to do this and ask somebody if they can help me out and stuff like that. There's always ways to help out with the cost and stuff. And then the, the fact of the time is going to bring down the cost anyways for a while because you're going to spread it out. You know? I think it was the Spanx woman, I forget her name. She, her goal and her, her daydream and her goal was, was motivated because she was uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. She, and, and from what I know, I don't know about those things and that was what the problem was in the first place. The ladies' undergarments and all those things. They were, they were made and designed and marketed by men. Men don't wear that. <laughs> so she, she, she finally got tired of that and said, oh no, this ain't work. <laughs> so her goal was to get some, something that made her feel comfortable and gave her a sense of power and stuff. And she got a lot of sense of power. Now you gotta make your goal attainable. And that's the fun part. Because you gotta make sure your goal is possible to achieve. And, and that sounds like something that's gonna defeat you because it, it, it already speaks of, oh, I can't really do that. I don't have this, I don't have time. The, the kids are in the way, you know, the car's broken. You know, this cat doesn't like my gourmet food I gave it to. You know, this, <laughs> There's just a lot of things like that to get, get it away. But make sure you don't make yourself, make your goals so easy after that, that you become bored. Because that's what you'll do. Well, I, I better make it easy. I'll just do this part here. And the next thing you know, you're bored. You don't want to do it. I think that happens a lot with physical fitness. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of people want to go into physical fitness. I want to get in shape and all this stuff, and they rush right in there until they go home and they're, oh, and they're hurt, so I won't go that hard. So now they're going there and they're not really enjoying themselves because they're not really doing anything that's measurable. They're, they're, they're below the level of measure. Yeah, so then they get bored and they quit. Yeah. So you wanna make sure that your goal is achievable and you wanna make sure that is something that you won't get bored with. And then we go to relevant. Make your goal relevant to the direction you want your life to go. And again, like I said, it's all about you. It's not my life, it's your life, you know? When I was in Houston, I went out running one day, it was real hot, you know? And that's when I first interacted with a lot of homeless people just talking. And they were really happy. They lived under a bridge in a cardboard box or in, in a tent or something like that, and they were happy. And, and, and that, was, that was their life. And it, you know, their goals were relevant to them. 
They might be something as simple. Yeah, today I, I hear they're going to have some. This place over here, down here, they're serving, they're serving some kind of design you know, or some kind of stuff. I'm going over there this afternoon. They go with to go over there and get that, and then see their friends that they, that they hang out with and stuff like that. Which to me was like it couldn't have been a lot higher, but it's your goal. It's your life, so if the relevance for your life is to go get some lasagna to, on, on, a, on a Tuesday and, you know, have, have some fish on a Friday or something, hey, and you, you're coming back and you're smiling and happy. And they're nice people. Just a lot of people just don't see them. They, they stopped me that day. It was like 104. They made me sit down and made me drink water and... They gave me cookies. <laughs> nice people. They, they used to, I think they thought I was their kid or something. <laughs> they were just trying to take care of me. So, but really, if you, if you want your life to be in business, then that would be relevant to what your life is. If you want to be in politics, or if you want to be a cowboy, you know, or a soldier, you know, whatever. But if you want your goal to be in business, then just because everybody else is a cowboy, don't focus on becoming the best cowboy. Focus on becoming the best business person, you know? But if you want to be the best cowboy, focus on becoming the best cowboy. And then, then you got to do time. And time, time is, a, is a tricky one because it's your goal and your time, you know? And that's the only measure that it can really have. You know, but you still want to look at, well, I want to I want to finish and be the, the greatest in three years, five years, ten years. Everybody likes those years. It might be 20 years. You know, it might be 50 years. It might be 100 years. It doesn't matter. You know, but the time is like that. Now we do the writing. You know, so you got to set your goals in writing. Then this gives you no excuse. That's the importance of writing. If you write it down, there's no excuse. You know, that, that's what you're going to have to do. All right, I wrote it down. Oh, man, I don't want to do it. Oh, there it is. I got to do it because I said I was going to do it. And that's only to you. That's your values and your beliefs and stuff like that. That's only going in towards you. Nobody heard you. <laughs> but you wrote it down, so now you feel responsible for doing that stuff. And, and, and that's good. But, you know, when you write your goals down, it, it helps you to stay specific and it helps you to stay on time, you know, because this, you, you write down all those different kind of measurable things and the specific things, and you put in time. You can say five years, but you got to remember that, that it's, it has to be flexible, too, you know, because, you know, goals are fluid. They keep changing and stuff, but still. The importance of writing down something, it, it, can't, it can't be unmeasured. I, mean, I, I do some work sometime with um, surgical residents, and they have to pass this test when they leave the internship and go to the uh, second year, or they don't get a license to, to do surgery. And you can't be a surgical resident if you can't do surgery, you know? but. It's, it's a big, long, two-day test and stuff. And actually, I looked at the test. The test's not that hard, but it's a test, and they get scared. Oh, I'll, I won't pass and stuff. So I have them write down, you know, those things, the questions and the answers that are really perplexing for them that they don't understand on the little yellow sticky cards. And I have them put it on the wall, you know? Put it on the wall in the category. <clears throat> and it's yours. Nobody sees it except who's ever in the house. And it, if it's like a question like, man, this is hard for me, put it on the man, this is hard for me. You know, then you go over there and you, you don't have to look for, well, I want to look on the question on radiology. Or I want to look on the question that's our father calling. No, actually, you want to look on the question that, man, this is hard for me. <laughs> then, then you just go over there and you can, then you can easily see that. And eventually you can move that question to the garbage because you know it, you know? So that, that's, that's the, 
writing down, that's how important it can be. So when you're setting your goal, write down what you want to do. You know? I, all that stuff, and, and it's yours. And it's yours forever. And you don't have to, you don't have to put a timeline on it. But I would, you know, so you can measure it. But you want to write it down. I want to flip that egg out. I, I want to double flip that egg. I want to go. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You want to do. Then you got to stick with it. So you have to be patient. Patience is 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 not a virtue. I don't think so. Everybody's all oh, patience is. Oh, you're such a patient person. How can you just go, you, you, nothing bothers you, there's no stress or anything? It's like, no, I'm not a patient person. I don't like anybody. So <laughs> why would I get bothered by what anybody's <laughs> going to say about me? Yeah, that's not patience. Patience is really, ah, oh, that little tedious, simple little thing that you don't want to do. Suck it up and it's all internalized and stuff. That's patience. All that other stuff, that ain't, that's not patience. And you got to be persistent. <laughs> and then, because I said that about patience, you have to make sure that your values are, are in there. And, and in, in, in real life, you, you have to be humble. <laughs> but again, you can't lie to yourself. You know, you, you, it gets real hard to make goals, you know. And be humble, but you can't lie to yourself to say, oh, I really like going over and hanging out with, with all the family in the backyard and stuff and everything. <laughs> so I don't want to go. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so you, got, you, you have to do that. Sometimes you want to go. You know, sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's like, oh, man, they're going to stick me with all the toddlers and stuff. I know they're going to do that. I Don't they do that? They do that to me. Oh, here come Gramps. Go say hi to Gramps. It's like, don't, don't send them over to say hi to me. I'll find them later. Now you got to be self-confident. That's me. See how humble I am? <laughs> I didn't care. They made me stand up there. He didn't care. He, he got the silver. I think he was mad. So, <laughs> but that's all right. So one thing about this too is self-confidence. Because there, there is one thing that is critical. It's really critical to achieving one goal, and that's self-confidence. That, and then that goes right back to don't lie to yourself. You gotta be true to yourself. If you know you can't do it, just say, don't say, oh, I really tried. You didn't try, you went in there with this, this lack of confidence. I can't do that, yeah? So you went in there with your head down, like, who was that that, that kept losing his tape? You, you just be Eeyore. You went in there with that Eeyore attitude. That might be a little bit out. Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be self-confident. Nothing destroys self-confidence more than the sense that time is passing and you haven't accomplished anything. And you haven't accomplished anything because you told yourself in the beginning you couldn't do it. You know? How you, how you gonna accomplish you know, you can't even accomplish crossing the street. You know, it's like, you know, I can't cross the street. The button's too high. I can't reach it to push the button. So you stand there as a four-year-old till you turn 12. <laughs> then you got to make up a dispute. So I, I was late because I couldn't reach the button to cross the street. Go away for the light. It'll work. So if the grandkids say that to you, it really doesn't work. <laughs> they were on a time. <laughs> yeah, so that, so that, that's what destroys goal setting more than anything else is a lack of self-confidence. And that self-confidence is, is, is really boosted when you don't lie to yourself. If it's true that you don't want to do it, just say, I don't want to do it. If, if you want to do it, then you put in all the steps 
you put in all the specifics, you put in the measurement, you write it down, then you do all the work and all that stuff. And then you accomplish it and you feel good about yourself. But if you don't really want to do it in the first place, just say, I want to do that. Yeah? And, and we use it all the time. We tell the kids, just say, just say no. <laughs> That's so hard to say no. Yeah. I work, try to work with my wife, and I love my wife. She's, she's, she's really accomplished. And, but she don't know how to say no. It's like, you can't wear all the hats in the hospital. You know? <laughs> Sooner or later, you gotta let somebody else wear a hat. You know, it's like, oh. Yeah, they just keep piling stuff on me. It's like, no, you don't want to hurt their feelings. You want everybody to feel good. So you just keep taking on everybody's responsibilities and stuff like that. Yeah, see, she's, that's why I get to work with residents. She's the resident director for the surgical department. She's a surgical oncologist, and she, that's why I'm in Utah. She's putting in an appendiceal cancer program down there. She, she's already put that in. But while she's putting that in, they, they get that. Oh, you want to do this? You want to do that? And now she's got like four or five hats. She's got to, she's got to read all these things every week and edit to all these things. <laughs> I told her, just said, no, I don't want to do that. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> That's work. I don't want to work. <laughs> well, hard to say no? Yeah. Yeah, it is. The easiest way to say no is outrank everybody in this. <laughs> you just tell them, Colonel, you told them to say no. <laughs> you just got to remember that in achieving goals, it's very important to achieve those steps. And then you, you reach your goal. It may, not, it may not be when you want to, but you reach your goal. One of my goals now is to is to set the record on the, in the world stage. I didn't get to go to the world last time because of the COVID. You know, I want to set the record. And I know I'll reach that goal. All I got to do is keep living. Sooner or later, I'll be in the over 100 group. And I'll be all by myself. <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I got to do. I just got to keep living. <laughs> and then I get the goal. And I get to set the goal, and I get to measure it, all that stuff. <laughs> now I compete. I compete in the uh, over 70 now. So that's the one I compete in. But I'll be moving to the over 75 soon. And that's tough, because all them guys. <laughs> it, 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 it feels like, you know, it, it, that, well, yeah, they can't be that strong. They are that strong. It's like this, these guys are huge. And they're just as talented and trained as hard as I do, so they really make that. So here's another thing you got to think about. When you set, set goals, make them high enough that you cannot accomplish them. I know it sounds contradictory, but you cannot accomplish your goal in one lifetime. You know? If you want to accomplish your goal in one lifetime, then you're going to get bored. What am I going to do next? I've already, I already did that, you know? I don't want to do that again. So you want to make your goal high enough so you can't achieve it in one lifetime. You know, like my goal to bring chivalry to the world. It's going to take more than one lifetime for, for the whole world to be chivalry. Well, maybe not. I don't know, you know? But it's going to take me a lot of work to, to kind of bring that forward and stuff because it's a very slow process. No one knows me. <laughs> and so, sometimes people, people who really make a, a huge impact in, in, in life, nobody knows them. Yeah, I'm, and the guy just died. I met him a couple of times, Vernon Jordan. No, nobody knew who he was. The most powerful man in the United States. Nobody knew who he was. But everybody saw him uh, at... Um, the presidential inauguration, not not the last one. He was the guy in the trench coat with the big hat on, standing there, and all of a sudden he'd walk by and he'd just give a little look and a smile and stuff like that. He just died recently, I think it was last year. But the power he had, but he didn't like all the credit. He was just a normal, average guy. He liked to play um, dominoes. 
with the Secret Service and those kind of people like that. He, he was kind of funny. Now we're getting into how to make goals work for you. Okay? Now we know how to set them up. Now we got to know how to make them work for you. So you go have to, your goal for all your aspects of your life, every part of your life, put it in there. You don't have to try to accomplish all those at once. You know, not, none of those things, but put them all in there. Yeah? And then, here we go. Write your goals down. <laughs> Always writing down. Yeah. And I know all you, 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 you guys out there, you like to, have fun with stuff with your grandkids and write things in cursive. <laughs> Look at it <them> now. <laughs> they have no idea what that is. <laughs> they, they, they think you're scribbling. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun to <laughs> write things in cursive and give the TV this. <laughs> but you know, you gotta write down your goals. But they're for you, so you can use cursive if you want to. <laughs> so that'll be that that'll be a lot of fun too. <laughs> yeah. Cause it, it, this gives you a clear, a clear visualization. And that's important. We're gonna talk about that in a second. You, you know exactly what you want to do. And just don't settle on your first draft. Because we said goals are fluid. So you don't want to settle on the first draft. You just don't, you know. Because you're going to build on it, and you're going to take away from it, and you're going to build. It's going, to, it's going to take a while. Then you want to create what's called a word picture. A word picture is really cool. Because what it is, it's just a, a, a heightened exaggeration of what you want to do. There's, it's just, some people call it that elevator pitch because it's short or something like that. You know, or that pocket type, you know, but you want to write that down. Because if you, you get into a situation where, you know, you might just accidentally be in the, in the, I'll just stay with the elevator pitch for a minute, in an elevator with somebody who is who has the power, you know? And you say, good morning. You be looking around and everything. In the elevator with the elevator, if it's in your pocket, you pull it up. Hey, let me tell you about this idea I had about with the company and stuff like this. He don't know what's on that card, you know? He might, doesn't matter, but he'll be listening. You have his captured attention and everything because he can't get up the elevator till he reaches the floor. And with the cards, you won't make mistakes. So you want to write down what it is you want to say. Or you can try to memorize it. Some people have great memories and stuff, but then that factor of you have a fear factor that comes in. He ain't going to listen to me. Why would he listen to me? That's the big boss. He's up on the top floor. He doesn't know me. And it, it really doesn't matter whether he knows you or not. But if you, you, you got that on a piece of paper, you can say, well, I had this idea. You know, you, you, you want to hear it? Of course you're going to say, yeah, he's in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what else is he going to say? I don't like you. <laughs> you know, talk to me in this elevator. So, and then you can just tell him, tell him what it is that you envision. He might remember one or two words, or he might not, but at least you'll walk out of there feeling good about yourself. And it'll boost your self-confidence because you were able to think that, yeah, you know, you were talking to this person. And people remember you even when you don't think. And another story about me when the, um, I was talking, I was in New Hampshire at the Republican Convention. <laughs> And I was wearing my Sears and Robux powder blue suit, <laughs> right, right off the rack. <laughs> and we was up in, in uh, Lebanon, New Hampshire, because that where we were living. And my wife was answering the question, but all you could see was me, because everybody else in the audience was white, and they weren't wearing the powder blue off the rack Sears and Robux suit. <laughs> So some years later, at, at a leadership conference in Texas, uh, I noticed Steve Forbes standing over in the corner. And so I forgot, I ain't doing anything. So I went over to talk to him. Hey, how you doing, Steve? He remembered me because of the, you know, I was the only black person there, and I had on a powder blue suit. From <laughs> 
So you never know what people are going <laughs> to remember you by or something like that. So we had a little good conversation and stuff. He didn't take any of my ideas, but I won't fault him for that. So that's why you got to do your word picture so that you'll be able to present that idea in the exact form that you want them to hear. You know, if you want to hear, oh, I got this idea about flipping eggs. I use this kind of backhand scoop and I whoop, I get underneath it and then bam, I bring it like this and I bring it together and they'll just, oh, that sounds very interesting. <laughs> I'm a vegan. <laughs> we, don't, <laughs> we don't eat those eggs anymore. Yeah, they can do that. And so, when you're writing down the word description, you have to be—you have to use a lot of description in your word. Lots and lots and lots. That's that's really the only place in goal setting where more is acceptable is putting that word down. And you can also use other props to the word, too. You might want to cut pictures out of a newspaper and stuff and put it on there and make yourself your own personalized paper that shows, shows some kind of flow of how, how your thing is, you know, for, to help you remember and use it and stuff when setting your goal. Because you got to remember first, it's your goal. It's not my goal. Not that your goal is not important. My goal is not important. Your goal is highly important to you. So you got to show a lot of detail, you know, and and then, and then you you got to add into that that word picture and stuff, short term, long term, and all that. That's where that comes into play, you know, with the time bounding. That's when you add in those different kind of steps and stuff. Because now now you can reward yourself, yeah. You can do your happy dance, like, you know. A lot of people. They don't do happy dances and stuff. I guess they think they'll look silly doing a, doing a who's your, well, for you guys, who's your mama now? You know, get your happy dance going on and stuff. So don't delude yourself that setting a goal is enough. You have to create milestones. And that the milestones is kind of like, well, this is where the interruption is going to take place, so I have to be prepared for this interruption. You know, whatever it's going to be, the interruption might be, I'm flipping the egg. Well, the skillet's too hot, or the plate is too hot, and the egg's going to stick. So I have to make sure that I'm ready at this time so I can and look all good and, and fancy at flipping that egg. So you got to put the milestones in like that. You know, and, and you just don't want two flips. You just want one nice flip like that. Yeah, and, and then, then, then you'll be able to do that. But that takes, that takes um, with writing it down, and then the word picture. You want to hold the handle at the right angle. You want your wrist at the right angle. You want to be able to scoop it over and stuff like that, and then flipping and stuff. You know? Back in the service sometimes when I was teaching some of the guys in the service, like how to throw a knife, and most people teach them how to throw the knife. You, you hold it like this. They say, well, you hold it like this here, and you throw it. Well, my hand's that big. And if someone got a little tiny hand like that, he holds it like that. It's not going to, it has to spin nine, every nine feet it spins one rotation. And that's how you throw a knife to make it stick into the tire. But if you got a short hand and you throw it like this, the wrist action is going to be here instead of down here where it would be for me. So you have to practice and you have to see that knife going with the word picture, that one rotation, which you can't see really you know, because it's going too fast, but you have to visualize it in your own mind. Every nine feet is going to turn one time and it's going to stick in. Here's a little quote from Bud Haney. I don't even know who he is. I just like that. It, it said, what can I do today that I did not do yesterday that will make tomorrow better? I, I like that quote, but in setting the goals, you want to you personalize it. What can I do today for for myself that I didn't do yesterday that's going to make tomorrow better in achieving my goal. You know, you, you always want to ask yourself that before you, before you turn in and go to bed. And if you're really ambitious, you write down what you're going to do tomorrow. You know, and, and you can look at today, what did I, and, and then you, you take that and you reverse it and you say, 
for today. Did I do what I said I was going to do today? And then and it's like, no. So now you rate yourself. Give yourself a zero. You didn't do it. So you, you get a big zero if you only did it halfway and it was like, I didn't want to do it. And then you just be honest with yourself and say, well, you know, I, I did it, but I really didn't want to do it. So you might give yourself a two, you know? And, and, and if you did it with great enthusiasm and a big smile and that it went just like that, you know, and you give yourself a five. And then at night you can you can measure that of what you what you said that you were going to do so that you make tomorrow better. Because you can write it down again if you want to. Do it every day. You can do that stuff all the time. I don't know if I go too much into keeping a journal. Everybody keeps a journal except kids. Yeah. They don't keep journals because the teacher made them in school. You go to school. Well, let's every everybody, let's get a notebook and write a journal. Look at all my notes. Sure, I know what's a journal. But uh, it, everybody else, you know, they keep journals. One more thing about, about goals until we do a little bit about daydreams. One important aspect of, 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 of goals that help you achieve your goals is to, one, be a kid. That's one of the most important things that people forget how to do. Mm -hmm. Just be a kid, just play, just have fun. It's your goal, you know? Nobody knows whether it's going forward or backwards, but you know if you're having fun achieving that goal. Nobody knows how many times that guy tried to get that egg and he broke the yolk or flipped it over and then, and then it, I think it becomes a fried egg after that. <laughs> or a scrambled egg in my case. But <laughs> they, they don't know. Yeah, you know, and they don't even care. I and mean, then you crack another egg. Every time you, you know, failure is a really good thing. So you want to be a kid, you know, and, and you want to rest too. You just don't, if, you, if you're setting a physical goal for yourself, you don't want to go out there and try to run a marathon on the first day of training. It's, and it's like, you, you, you're, going to, you're going to fail, but it's ain't a failure failure. You just can't do it. This is the first day. That's reality. Don't lie to yourself. Will you be able to run a marathon eventually? There's no reason, unless you've got some real physical handicap. And even then, you can run that marathon. It may take you two weeks, but, <laughs> you know, you can run that marathon. If you train, if you don't train, you can't run that marathon. So, I mean, even right today, if you guys say, I'm gonna run a marathon in next year or two years or something like that, and you put together all the things that we talked about, all the writing down, all the visualization, all that, put in the milestones where it might fail, where it might succeed, how it's gonna make you feel, where you're gonna put your happy dance at the end and everything. You can do that and go out and run a marathon. I guarantee you can run that marathon, yeah. You can do that. That's just setting the plan. And then you just follow it. And then, you know, then the other thing is that, like we said, make your goals important to you. And then there's a trick to that. Don't tell anybody what your goal is until you're ready for them to say, you can't do that. <laughs> that's, gonna, that's what they're going to say to you. I don't know why. And they're being polite and they're being nice. I remember in the second grade that the teachers told me I can't do that. I, and I, I didn't, you know, that hurt my feelings. What, what it was, everybody was there. We have that, what are you going to be when you grow up? You know? And all the people, I'm going to be the president. I'm going to be the bus driver. I'm going to be the, I wanted to be the Pope. They told me. That's what they did. <laughs> you, you were my class. <laughs> they did this. And I was like, why can't I be the Pope? I don't know. But it, that, that was the whole, you can't do that. Because the Pope was always um, Italian. <laughs> you know? yeah, he was always Italian. So I couldn't be the Pope. But in my house, every morning, I had to go right here, say morning prayers. You know, it never explained. I think I was almost 32. Maybe I was even older 
where I finally figured out when we say this prayer and and um, Joseph's most chaste spouse. But I was only seven years old. I thought it was Joseph's most chaste mouse. I couldn't figure out why is he chasing this mouse? <laughs> you know, yeah. I was in my thirties when I figured out it, it was most chaste spouse. <laughs> no, no one ever told me that stuff. So uh, that was good. That's why I wanted to be the pope. You know, <laughs> I can get the answers to these things I don't know about. So uh, it, it was kind of good. So yeah, again, you got to be true to yourself when you when you play it and having fun, and you get laughed at and stuff like that. So uh, I learned that. So. This is on daydreams, you know? Pe people, people daydream. And daydreams are only where your future begins. That's all a daydream is. It's, it's not any much more than that. It's where your future begins. Because it's your daydream. You might be just sitting around relaxing. Oh, you know, I, I really wonder what it's like to, to dance on a comet, you know? <laughs> or um, something like that. And you're daydreaming about this stuff or what it's like to travel into space or any of that. Now you can buy tickets to go up there and go into there. So daydreams, they do come true, but it just, it takes time. And you gotta remember, daydreams aren't, aren't your best thoughts. They're not bad thoughts, they're not good thoughts. Daydreams are crazy thoughts. Who thinks about dancing on a con? Nobody thinks about dancing on a comic. You see? Yeah. She thinks about it. Yeah. <laughs> but those are where daydreams start. They, they're where your future begins. Because you can accomplish what your daydreams are. So when, when, you, when you're daydreaming and you really like what you're daydreaming about, take time to develop it. And... and let me see, I skip along. So you got to remember to, they're your crazy ideas. So if you tell somebody prematurely about your crazy idea, you know what they're going to say. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and your response that you don't have to say back is, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> this is my crazy idea, and I think that I really it makes me good to want to do this, so I'm going to do it. So that's that's where you be honest with yourself. So and when you're developing your trade, you've got to be positive. Yeah, if, if just to dance on the head of a pin or something like that, that's really doable. That ain't all that crazy. You just got to have a big pin. You know, dancing on a comet, that's a little bit hard. You know, you got to get to where the comet is, you know, and all those things, and that's where all that planning and goal setting comes into play. When you you want to think of your life as an epic movie, you know, Gone with the Wind, something like something big, and you put all the different the different milestones and stuff on the day, and you put them all in there and stuff. You put the hurdles, you put the positive things, you put the hooray for me things, you put all those things. To, how am I going to tell people things? How, how am I going to make this grow and all these goals like that? You want to make it an epic movie. You don't want to make it a mini series that's on TV where, you know, you know, and then it ends. And the mini series are so lousy now from, yeah, that the mini series come to, come to always the good part. But they always have the, now they have the guy going and uh, take over with the hero the hero left off. He got too old, so no, not a guy he goes and does that. So that's about it. I'm gonna put up, put up my favorite guy that everybody likes. There he is. There's two of him. That's Yoda. <laughs> so you want to know the difference between a master and a beginner, and that that to me it speaks a lot of volume. A master has failed more times than the beginner has ever tried. You know. And, and that's, an, that's an important thing. There's one more after that, one more little slide. The greatest teacher failure is. Yeah. Thank you. I hope everybody was able to walk away with something. <laughs>